June 22nd, 09.30 a.m., Central Saanich, Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. The Saanich Historical Artifacts Society is usually calm and peaceful at this time, filled with tourists and locals interested in the antique machinery on display at the museum. This day, however, is different. There is a sense of urgency about the assembled group moving rapidly from tree to tree. As one looks over towards the cars assembled in the parking lot and the antennas protruding above them, the meaning becomes clear. June 22nd, 2013 is the start of the annual amateur radio communications exercise known as Field Day. Every year on the fourth weekend in June, radio amateurs gather in remote locations similar to this one and set up a temporary amateur radio station. The main goal of this procedure is to simulate conditions that amateurs would be exposed to when operating in a disaster or emergency situation. But it also encompasses a friendly contest aspect as well. The main goal of the field day competition is to make as many contacts with other field day stations across North America within a 24 hour period. The main frequencies that are used are in the HF band due to their long distance propagation capabilities. However, VHF and even UHF frequencies can be used to facilitate more localized communications. The one catch, no repeaters or IRLP can be used in the contest. Voice communications are certainly not the only method of transmitting information over amateur radio. Newer digital modes such as packet radio and even old school Morse code can be used in the competition. Points are not only awarded for the sheer number of contacts, but also for the mode in which the contact was made. According to the ARRL, points are awarded as such. One point for voice contacts and two points for Morse code or contacts made using digital modes. In past years, Victoria, British Columbia's West Coast Amateur Radio Association has done respectably well in the rankings and expectations are high this year as well. The West Coast Amateur Radio Association's field day setup is a little different every year, and the 2013 event was a wonderful mix of different pieces of radio gear, including HF and VHF radios, and even a localized Wi-Fi mesh network. 2013 could be a record year just for the sheer number of stations that are actually set up. Behind me we've got a VHF 2 meter rig set up, over on this side we've got one HF voice station. Behind me in the back, we've got a second HF voice station. Both of those are operating on different frequencies. Down around in the trailer in the corner, we've got a third high frequency voice station. We have another looks like VHF station being set up over there. And way back in the far corner, we have Morse code or CW operation, which is going to be taking place on several different bands. Of course, all of this would not be possible without the installation of some impressive and rather large antennas. The antenna setup is always something for a newcomer to marvel at. Dave, V7DFP, is the keeper of this unique device known as the antenna launcher, or more colloquially, the potato gun. Weighted tennis balls are attached to a length of fishing line and then inserted into the business end of the launcher. The launcher is charged to about 40 psi, and after some careful aiming, the ball is fired into the air, carrying the fishing line with it. If everything has gone according to plan, the tennis ball falls back to earth after successfully looping the length of line over a stout tree branch. The tennis ball is then cut off and a length of stout cord pulled over the branch. The result? A very handy antenna support. Field Day 2013 involved the use of four separate long wire HF antennas. Specifically, three separate antennas for all the voice stations, one of which was a gigantic loop and a fourth antenna for use on the CW bands. Of course, another major concern is how to power all the radio equipment for the duration of the event. ARRL rules clearly state that the main power grid is not to be used in a portable station, and that power must be generated or stored locally. The solution this year? Two separate portable generators. Finally, with multiple radios operating simultaneously, the possible of duplicate contacts being logged is high. The obvious solution is to use a computer logging program, but how to keep everything in sync? The solution? A Wi-Fi mesh network consisting of WRT54GLs running the DDWRT firmware. Many networking enthusiasts should be familiar with the WRT54GL. The ability to install third-party firmware gives this little wireless access point features that are usually only found in commercial-grade hardware. In this case, a peer-to-peer -peer wireless mesh network that allows all the logging computers to stay in sync. 
with the antennas erected, the radios set up, and the computers synchronized, everything is ready to go. And just after 11 a.m. on Saturday morning, the first contact is made. Generally, radio operators work in pairs. One operator logs communications on the computer, leaving the second operator free to concentrate on making communications. There are enough operators here to make sure that the radios keep running even while lunch is served. While the main goal of field day is to maximize the number of contacts and simulate emergency communications, it also brings the amateur radio community together and gives radio amateurs the opportunity to show their craft off to interested visitors. It also provided the perfect backdrop for John, the E7SDJ, to show off a project that he and others had been working on for the past several months, a fully functional amateur radio station in the museum at Saanich Artifacts. The Saanich Artifacts radio station is a fully functional, permanent demonstration of amateur radio technology. The station was constructed using donated radio gear and features a fully functional 2 meter rig along with HF radio. The station was formally opened by John Fuller, VE7JMF, during Field Day 2013. Tell us all about what we got here. You know what we got? Well, I don't know about what we have here, but I, I know about our Robson whiskey uniform. And uh, he, was, uh, <coughs> Marine, he was an operator for the um, Coast Guard, and he always had new innovations and stuff. And uh, he did the radio um, examination too. So uh, we sadly miss him, but we're going to celebrate him here. And I'm going to cut the coax. And I don't know if he would recognize any of this stuff in the radio station, but I'm sure he'd be very familiar with it. <laughs> there we are. Thank you. Thank you. 2013 also saw the handing out of the very first annual Field Day Award. The Field Day Award, created by Jim Chu, is to be handed out to a radio amateur in recognition of their contributions to the hobby. The award was created in memory of Alan Robson, VE7WU, a radio operator and dedicated Field Day participant who passed away last year. This year, Alan's wife Charlotte presented the award. The recipient of this year's award was Al Muir. The prize, a fantastic pocket knife, a beautifully engraved mug, and a recognition publicly for a job well done. After the awards were handed out, cake, and then right back to the radios to continue logging contacts. By 8pm, I was tuckered out and decided to call it a day. After all, I needed to download all this footage onto my PC. But just because it was late didn't mean the radios needed to stop. In fact, several radio operators stayed all night to keep the contacts flooding in. By the time I arrived back on the scene the next morning, the breakdown of the field day stations had already begun. Still though, radio operators were hunched over equipment, trying desperately to tune in just one more contact before the deadline. Finally, the call came. Time was up, and the official numbers were to be recorded. After the official cease and desist order was given, the only thing left to do was break down the stations, dismantle the antennas, and wrap up the literally hundreds of feet of wire used in the event. With more than 500 total points, a new permanent radio station established, and a new award given out, Field Day 2013 was a resounding success. It'll be tough to beat the events of this year, but there's no doubt that the dedicated volunteers working behind the scenes to make Field Day a success are already in the planning stages for next year. For INET, this is Christopher, reporting.